Australia's power grid is about to be reshaped with the introduction of a carbon tax. The CSIRO has outlined its vision for a low-carbon future with a mix of renewables, geothermal and lower emissions coal supplying all of Australia's power needs within 30 years. The research and development is continuing apace, but funding for commercialisation has stalled, with investors shying away from Australian companies. In the first of two reports on Australia's energy future, Michael Troy looks at how some of the pieces of this energy puzzle are coming together. Freezing cold and windy, ideal conditions for CSIRO scientists to test their latest invention one that could give Australia an edge in the race to develop renewable energy technologies. There's definitely a race on, but I think at this point in time Australia is, is really up there in the world and uh, what you see here behind us, uh, that's world leading technology. This is the first uh, large scale, first megawatt scale site that uh, ultra battery has been used uh, in the world uh, at the uh, Hampton wind farm uh, here. The battery system, invented by a CSIRO scientist, uses traditional lead-acid chemistry and transforms it with a form of capacitor, with a new battery called an ultra-battery. There's enough stored energy in this one container to power a thousand homes for a day. The batteries also even out the power fed into the grid. On the screen you can see the, uh, the wind speed coming from the turbine. So as the, as the wind uh, changes speed, what happens is the, the power output uh, goes up and up and down. We're tapering the rate of change of power that's coming out of the farm. The reason we do that is we make it more grid friendly. The commercial partner with the CSIRO, Eckholt, has already sold the batteries to Japan, China and America. These energy storage modules have been designed so they can be shipped anywhere in the world and be ready for use within days. While the ultra battery looks set for commercial success, the CSIRO says for renewable technologies to succeed in Australia, the carbon tax is needed to even out the playing field as coal-fired electricity is still much cheaper. If we want to reduce the carbon intensity of our energy sector, we need some form of mechanism to do that because the stationary energy sector provides uh, about 50% of our carbon emissions. Dr Alex Wannis is the director of the CSIRO's Energy Transformation Program and his modelling shows Australia's future power needs can be met even with a big reduction in emissions. The future of energy will require a mix of very different energy technologies. So we will require some what is typically called baseload technologies that are constantly providing power for our needs in our industry. Uh, but then we can see other technologies coming into the energy system, such as renewable, that are more intermittent. That means they only provide power when, say, the wind is blowing and the sun is shining. But we might also see some other technologies, also renewables, uh, who can actually take over base loads such as geothermal. But getting the money to develop them is still proving very difficult, with Australian renewable energy friendly stocks slumping 17% this year. The crazy thing is in Australia uh, we're blessed, uh, we have the IP, we have the University of New South Wales, a global leader in solar research, we have the CSIRO. What we need to do is commercialise uh, some of these technologies so they don't all go overseas. Jeff Everson from investment management company ArcX has just launched a global clean energy fund for retail investors, but they've had to turn to overseas companies to ensure returns. Globally, there's a massive move this way. I mean, if you look at some of the largest conglomerates worldwide, General Electric or Siemens, their fastest growing divisions are often their renewable energy divisions. Big competition indeed for the small players in Australia. There's a small uh, core of commercialisers in Australia that, you know, break their hearts and, and, and beat their brains out to uh, take what we get access to and do our, do our very best at it. The first test installation of an ultra-battery module in the United States should be finished in a few weeks.